Q&A with Dr. Charles here. And uh, I'm very excited today because um, we have some very good questions coming in. I know you guys have been waiting. We just wanted to make sure we can start at about 3 o'clock and then we go for it, um, giving people some time to connect with us. But I know that uh, we are ready for an exciting time of uh, of Q&A. I hope all of you are on. Let me see who is on here. Chrissy is on. We have uh, Mar uh, Pastor Maria all the way in Denmark, Pastor Victoria. We have Sir pa Vic uh, Veronica, God bless you, Yvonne. We have Prince, God bless all of you that have joined me. We have uh, Frank, we have Prophet Frank, God bless you. Shrijit, love you, and Daniel, love you, love you, love you all. I'm glad you joined me today for Q&A, and um, like I said, we are going to be dealing with a few things, very exciting topics that I think that were a blessing to, to all of us today. And um, I, part of it is, like I always say, um, it's always a good thing to send the questions ahead of time. That way I can put my thoughts together and gather it and then answer you. Because if you do it last minute, maybe 15 minutes before the program comes, I will have to try to move them around and put them in a format where I can just read them one at a time. So, but uh, it's always a good thing. Send your questions ahead of time. It helps me a lot in studying on time. So we had to be running around taking care of some things. And uh, hello, Heavenly. I'm glad you joined me. And Allison, I'm glad you all joined me. And Sidonia, God bless you. I'm glad you joined me. So we are going to be doing Q&A today. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be great. We're going to have a, uh, an amazing time um, dealing with some of the questions that we have today. So I'm going to start off with um, one of the first questions that came. This is a question that came today. It says, uh, what is the difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit? That's a very good question. What is the difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I want you to notice the emphasis. One is gifts, plural, and the other one is fruit, singular. So, the Holy Spirit's fruit is singular, but then the gifts, what we consider the gifts of the Spirit, is considered plural, or in other words, to understand the fruit means the seed is there. So the fruit of the Spirit, it says in Galatians, we're going to read that scripture in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. This is what the Bible says. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is joy, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Fate, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. But uh, it's always a good thing to read things in context. It talks about the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. We're going to be looking at that scripture in Galatians chapter 5. And then we're going to be looking at the, the scripture also in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, to understand the difference between the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. It is, I, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, thing to, to explore today. So I'm going to go back again to Galatians chapter 5. It says, um, verse 16, to get things in context, it's always a good thing to start from, uh, from where the thoughts begin. It says, walk in the Spirit. Verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it's giving you two things. It said, walk in the Spirit, and then you will not fulfill, or you will not come to a place where you are trying to deal with the cravings of a different kind. And it says, for the Flesh lusted against the spirit. That means the flesh is always lusting against the fish, the spirit, and the spirit is fighting against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Because they are fighting, what you want to do you cannot do. But it gives us a secret right here. But if you're led by the spirit, if you're led, if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. 
So it's telling us if the Spirit of God is leading you, you're not under the law. And it tells you now the works, the activities of the flesh are manifest, which are this. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies. It says envy, I mean the list is longer than you can imagine. Envings, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of this which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they that which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It means to inherit something means it is available to you, but you cannot really grab, grasp it. You cannot take a hold of it. That means if you're operating like this, the kingdom that's available to you, you will not be able to get a hold of a kingdom. It does not say you cannot enter it says you cannot, it tells you right here, it says cannot inherit. Inheritance means you're taking possession of. That means you cannot operate in the fullness of your calling. You cannot operate if those things are operating in your life. So we, those are things that we have to watch. And then he brings a contrast. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit. Now, he's telling us here, it says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. It does not say the fruits of the Spirit are. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit, and that was what I said the other day, the, fruit, the, pr the proof that you are actually filled with the Spirit is love. That is how, that is the basic characteristic. I'm not talking about you being a nice person. I'm talking about when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the first thing I look for is, does this person love? What does love mean? Do you love your enemies? The proof of love is this. While others do not love you, you love them first. That's the real test of it. A person that is filled with the fruit of the Spirit, with the fruit of the Spirit, the first thing they do is they love all. Their love is not different from one person to another. They love consistently. They love on purpose. They love without limits. They love. So love is the proof of the fruit. And it says love and the next thing is joy. A person that is full of the Spirit, they, they exhibit joyfulness. These are things you can actually look at them and say, this one must be filled with the Spirit. Because the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The Bible says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spirit, spiritual songs, making melodies in your heart by the Holy Ghost. It tells you, these are the character. This is what the Holy Spirit in you produces as a fruit. It is the proof that the seed of God, the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, is actually in operation in your life. Now, let me keep reading. It says, peace. Those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, they always seek peace. They're not looking to war. Now, Okay, now I'm going to bring something. Have you noticed some Christians, they like to fight. They like warfare. They are also focused. I said this before. The Holy Spirit never operates in an atmosphere of war. It always operates in the atmosphere of peace. When the Holy Spirit is in a place, there is just peace. There is joy. There is gladness. There is forgiveness. You can tell the Holy Spirit is there. But when people are always looking to fight, 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 that is where, what angels do. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, His gift, or rather His fruit in you, produces peace that passes all understanding. And then it goes on to say, long-suffering. In other words, it means no matter what you go, you have this ability, you have the capacity to handle whatever people throw at you. In other words, your, your ability, your, um, what do you say, your threshold to handle suffering, people doing things against you, is un, uh, unimaginable. That means you're not moved by what people do to you. You can handle 
whatever is thrown at you that is not right. You, you, you have an ability to handle criticism, handle all kinds of things without reacting to them. You are very long-suffering. I'm trying the best way to communicate that to you. I hope... <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you guys. I know Richard is on here. And um, I'm glad all of you. <laughs> I love you. I listen, say, I run from silly, mean people. Yes, just stay in peace and you do just fine. So I'm talking about understanding the proof when somebody is really, is really filled with the Holy Spirit, they have the ability to be, to, 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 to show um, a capacity to handle sufferings longer than other people. Now, I, I do understand I can get into details about that, but I'm trying to tell you it is just the fruit of love. Love is long-suffering. Love is joyful. When there is love, there is joy. When there is love, there is peace. And then the next thing is, when people are always going out of handle, that is operating from the flesh. But when you're operating by the Spirit, there is gentleness. Gentleness. You see, let the Holy Spirit work that out of you. It's already in you, but when you allow the Holy Spirit, when you nourish that, let the Holy Spirit take over your soul, take over your mind, take over your, your whole being. He will begin to produce this in you without you trying. Just yield to him, allow him to do it, and you find that you're very gentle. Don't tell me, well, this is how I am. That's not how you are. He said, oh, you can't change me. The Holy Spirit changes you. We are supposed to be transformed. We are supposed to change, to be conformed to the image of the Son. Gentleness is part of the fruit of the Spirit, the exhibition of the fruit of love. And the other thing it mentions here is goodness. It is the disposition to look for the welfare of others. I taught a whole message on the force of God's goodness. Is that, is that uh, quality of God that looks for your well-being. So when a person is operating goodness, they always seek the well-being of everybody around them. And you can tell that is the Holy Spirit producing the love fruit in you. And it is, exp it is expressed in goodness. And then it talks about um, faith. When there is love, love believes the best about things. You can tell that's part of the expression of the fruit. You believe the best about things. You have an, an, an uncanny ability to just believe that good things will always happen. People might call you crazy, but that's part of the expression of love. You believe the best about people. So when you understand that the fruit of the Spirit is love, Expressed in, you start going down, joy, in peace, love expressed in long suffering, love expressed in your gentleness, love expressed in your goodness, love expressed in your faith. Faith works because of that love. Hallelujah. Now it goes on to say meekness. Now meekness is strength on the control. It means you as much power as you have to respond to people. You hold it back. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness means power under control. You know how to release it. Even when you ought to strike out, you choose to forgive. There is a meekness about you. The Bible says that um, Moses was a very meek man, but of course he exhibited a lot of strength. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Spirit is expressing love in you, there is a meekness about you like a lamb. You just make like the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you. Hello, Kim. Welcome to Q&A. That is my cousin, Kim. God bless you. Now, let's go to the next one. It tells you here. It says, temperance. It's the ability to be even killed. That means you are not moved by what things are happening around you. You have a temperance about you. And that's what love does. When there is love, you just cool you calm, you are, I mean, under pressure, you know how to handle business. I'm just doing my best to answer this as quickly as possible. And it says, against this, there is no law. But I want you to notice the first three talks about joy, peace, long-suffering. It has to do with what is within you. And then it goes to gentleness, 
Goodness, now it begins to extend to how you interact with people. How you interact with people. You're gentle towards people. You show goodness and kindness to people. And then, you, you, the way you, when you are, you are in a scene, the next one is the power. You show faith in people. And then it goes on to say meekness. It all tells you about how you interact with people. When you have the fruit of the Spirit, it's not just what's on the inside. It's what is seen. A fruit is something that is seen by your lifestyle, how you handle every situation. Now, but we're going to be talking about the gift. The gift is what the Holy Ghost does. To The purpose of the gift is to reveal Christ, is to reveal Jesus. It, you, you understand that in a short time. I hope this is helping you guys. I hope this is helping you. Hallelujah. Oh, I see we have Pastor Dennis. I miss you. <laughs> I hope the meetings went very well with the man of God. I love you, and I know you guys must have had a great time. But we are looking forward to coming there. It is a force of God's goodness coming to Uganda. Uganda will experience the force of God's goodness. They would experience such love, such compassion. They would experience a total revival of a nation. Hallelujah. God has his mark on Uganda. I can see 2018 it's going to be a Holy Ghost move across the nation of Uganda. We can't wait to be there. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. So we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit. It's singular fruit. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now love that is expressed in these other things. And I mentioned how you interact with people. This is how I can tell somebody that is real full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus made a statement, by this shall people know you are my disciples. One thing, love. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. It's not when you're speaking tongues. It's not when you, 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 you know, people fall under the power. No, 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 that's important, that's nice. We do it too, we have a lot of fun doing that. But guess what? People know us by our fruit, by the fruit of love. He said, by their fruit, not by their fruits, by their fruit you shall know them. What is the fruit? The fruit of love. You can tell love or hatred, love or bitterness. It's very simple. A person that goes around trying to destroy everybody is not operating in love. Because when there is love, love believes the best about people. So my focus about when you talk about a fruit of the Spirit, I have the other things, patience, all those things, this is wonderful. But when you have love and you really start walking in love, God's seed in you is love. When you start walking in love, then the rest of the things just happen automatically. See, when you operate in love, the next thing that will happen, joy will be there. People that love are very joyful. People that love don't do war. You can't, you can't have love and war. You have peace. <laughs> so if you understand that the fruit of the Spirit is simply love, that is expressed in joy, in peace, and it tells you the next one, it's in long-suffering. You're very patient with people. You're waiting for them to get it right. And then gentleness. Oh boy, do we need gentleness in the body of Christ. Sometimes the ministers... We seem to have the most, you know, um, indictment in this area. We, we have little, little patience with people. What am I saying? Sometimes the way people treat, sometimes in some countries, they treat people just rough because they are, maybe have some status. If you cannot treat people with dignity, the way a man's or woman's greatness is in how, is seen in how they treat the least amongst us. If you can come to the least of the people that people don't consider anything, and you can lift them and make them feel they are great, that shows the greatness in you, and that is what gentleness does. When you're gentle with people, you come in there and you always see something wonderful, something nice. When people, everybody else is telling you, oh, this person, do you know who he is? He has done this, he has done that. In your heart, you're thinking, I'm going to take a different approach. Sometimes when we meet witch doctors, 
Everybody's telling us, don't do this, don't do that. These people are crazy. They say, oh, just stay away from... And I sit down with the witch doctors, and I'm very gentle with them. You know, a lot of Christians want to go and fight with them and shout. I said, I bind you, the uh, walk of the devil. No, I just sit with them, sit on the floor with them. I said, thank you for welcoming us. Because when I look at them, I see a creature that was made by God, created by God to become an expression of God, but still does not know that that is who they are. And they are serving the devil, but I don't look at that. I am very gentle with them. I'm very tender with them. When I meet the known Christians, I just, I'm just very gentle with them. And people are always surprised. I tell you a story. We were in, um, in Roman in uh, the Netherlands. We had a big, 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 big meeting. It was glorious. And uh, the place was so packed with people. We had the gypsies that came in a convoy of Mercedes, and they were so beautiful, they packed out the place. The hall could not fit the people that came in there many years ago. It was glorious. It was just glorious. My God, I can't forget those meetings. And during the day before the meeting started, we were driving by, and we were told about this uh, psychic woman, this psychic lady that had the biggest psychic school, I believe, in the Netherlands, in Holland, and the people were just kind of afraid of her, and she had a school where she trains people to be psychic. But do you know what happened? <laughs> it was amazing. So when we drive by, one of the people in that church, when they passed by her place, the school, she put her face in the, out of the window and said, I curse this place in the name of Jesus. I curse, <laughs> I curse this place in the name of Jesus. You know, Christians are kind of weird sometimes. They're cursing the woman, cursing everything. Oh, we like to curse. Oh, boy. <laughs> and we have an opportunity to curse. We sure do curse hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was this. This woman... This, this woman that was the psychic that all the Christians were fighting against because she had such an influence amongst those in the government, in fact, amongst those in power, they came to her for her to read their future. So the meetings were on, and that night, this woman had to sneak into the meeting. She sneaked into the meeting, and guess what happened? While she was there, Jesus met with her. She was completely healed. And when she came up on the stage, this church people that organized the meeting were so shocked that she came. They said, that's the psychic woman that would turn to whisper to me. That's a psychic woman. I just looked at her and she was crying, just loving Jesus. And she came and you know what she said? She said, wow. When she, this lady at the time was about 39 years old. And she said when she was 16 years old, she said that as a, as a young girl, she was very curious and there was a bright light. She said to me, she was saying to the audience, she said, as I was sitting there and you're going back and forth, I saw this bright column of light all around you. All over you. I didn't see it, but she saw it. She's a psychic. She could see the spirit, even though she was doing it illegally, but she could see. And so when she saw the light, whenever I walked across the stage, this light beam, just like a light beam all over me, was moving with me back and forth. I didn't see it. I was just being myself, just loving on the people. And she said when she saw that, I don't forget that story. And my team, those of you that were, were there with me, you know what I'm talking about. It was amazing. She said she saw this light moving back and forth. I was in, in, enveloped in that light. So as I was speaking, she would see the light would come out of me to people and healing them. Hallelujah. God is light. Hallelujah. So when she saw this light, she said it was the same light she saw when she was 16 years old. And she when she saw this light when she was 16 years old, she began to weep. The light made her feel so wonderful, she was crying. So she went to the religious people that were quote-unquote Christians to ask them, what is this light about? 
and they told her, oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. Walk away from that light. She said, but how can the devil make me just be full of joy and full of love and I want to love everybody? And do you know that this religious people turned her off from an encounter with Jesus? An encounter with a wonderful spirit of God? So she began to search 17 years old, 18, and she ended up being a psychic because she was trying to help people. She was trying to help people, and since from 16 years old, she's 39 years old now. There's about 23 years, 23 years, she's been searching for this. And then I come to town with Jesus, and I'm preaching, and they sing this. Can I tell you, most of our meetings, Jesus appears to the people. He walks amongst them. God moves in a place, and they can see him. It's amazing what we see in our meetings. I don't talk much about that, but it happens so often. I don't talk about it. It is one of the mark of our meetings. People say, I saw the man in the white robe walking with you. Wonderful. I love that. You know, I love when Jesus is there and they can see him. I don't see him. You see, you see, I see him reaching out to them. I see through his eyes to see that. I know he's there. I don't see him because he is in me looking out to the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this woman, she was weeping and she, she said she saw this light and for 23 years this beautiful thing comes and encounters Jesus that night. Can you, under, can you, can you imagine what happened to her? And she was so happy and I said, come here, sweetheart. I hugged her. She just melted in my, in my arms. You see, what the church needs now, it's love. The world does not need money. The world needs love. Every cry of a human heart is, I want to be loved. I want to be valued. And sometimes people looking for love find love in the wrong places and get abused. But when love is expressed, God is revealed. Hallelujah. The Bible says, anyone that loves is born of God and knows God. If you love not, you know not God, for God is love. Hallelujah. The proof that you love God is when you can love the people next to you that don't see much. That is the fruit of the Spirit. I hope this is helping somebody. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody. See, this is what I'm talking about. Now, this woman, she was so happy. And now, the, the church people, they were so shocked at my response to this woman I was so gentle with her and they were kind of curious why why would it be just don't you know who she is oh she is a psychic blah 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 you know how we Christians talk and I said leave her alone she has seen the one the lover of her soul and just leave her alone wonderful Jesus <laughs> do you know what happened the next day because of the miracles and the things that happened it was so packed that the hall was full and the space between the, the, the uh, pulpit, the, the stand where I was coming to preach, and the people, it was full. The seats were put out there. People were outside, could not enter. This is the Netherlands. This is Europe. Our meetings in Europe are always crazy. When the people come together, we pack out places. In, 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 uh, in Hamburg, Germany, 10,000 people. Hanover, Germany, 7,500 people that came to the meeting. Glorious things God did. In Europe, in Paris, over 5,000 people came. God was moving, and the lives of people were being touched. What is the key? People cannot understand love, but they know when they experience love. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And it's expressed in joy. It is seen in a peaceful heart, in a peacemaking, a peacemaker's heart. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. That brings you back to love. Hallelujah. But now hear what happens now. You don't need to intellectualize all this. You just need to experience what I'm talking about. People want to experience love. We are the expression of love. We don't reflect love. We are love beings. When we love, that is just an expression of who we are. I hope this is helping somebody. Hallelujah. So here was this woman. The next day, this place was so full. This psychic woman, the quote-unquote psychic woman that encountered Jesus, do you know what she did? 
I love it when witch doctors come to our meetings. I love it when Buddhists come to the meetings. I love it. I can tell the stories like this. When you love on people, you bring out the best out of them. But when you don't trust them, you bring out the worst out of people. When you love people, you pull out the best out of them. Religious people tell, oh no, we can't do that. You know, we've got to do, we have to maintain this. Rubbish. People know you as a man or woman of God, not because of the entourage around you. They know you because of the love that you express. That is how you know. But these shall may know you are my disciples. When you have that fruit, by their fruit they shall be known. Love. When you love, you don't do the other things that the Bible talked about. When you love people, you don't walk in adultery, you don't do fornication, you don't do uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. No, you don't manipulate anybody because all you want to do is love people. <laughs> it confuses the devil. You know one thing that confuses the devil? When you are the expression of love. Satan cannot counterfeit love. He will try to do everything else, but love is one thing I've come to realize Satan cannot touch. Because God is love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, this, now, this psychic lady came the next day. This was so beautiful. She came the next day. But when she was coming, the crowd was so full, there was no place. So when I saw her coming, she came with the whole school. <laughs> they all came to the miracle meeting. The whole psychic school closed down. In fact, when we were in Uganda, in a place called Hoima. In Hoima, do you know all the bars were closed down? All the Muslim, the mosque, the people came to the meeting just in love with Jesus. While we were there, I was told for a couple of years, there was not a single bar in Hoima. I don't know what it's back, but the pastors in Hoima told me, he said, man of God, all the bars closed. The people were getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. I like that better. <laughs> I like when you can get a dose of that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So this is what happened. <laughs> this lady, <laughs> this lady comes up with 30 of her students 30 people sh showed up can you imagine that <laughs> i love i love the word of god do you know what happened they came with candles all 30 of them with candles on one hand they had candle on the other hand they had roses Oh my goodness. I love that. They came and the, the church, some of the church people that came the next day, they would say, oh, that's the lady. And, and they were trying to say, oh, put her in the back. Put her. Hello, we are back. Uh, just a little technical glitch, but we are back, and I'm glad we are back. Just let me know you can hear me. I'm going to keep telling about the story of this wonderful lady in Holland. It was so beautiful, and the lady came with her people. It was amazing. They came with roses on one hand and candles. When I saw them coming, guess what happened? I just said to them, 
please let him come forward. Let him come forward. And the space that was supposed to be for the altar call, for salvation call, and for people that are coming to give the testimony, I said, please come here. I said, sweetheart, come over here. Come and, and I said, sit on the floor. These beautiful people just came, all 30 of them, sat on the floor with their candles and their roses. And boy, did they make that place look beautiful. I don't know whether there was a fire code about that, but I didn't care. I just thought it was nice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> they came there. It was, it was beautiful. It was amazing what happened. So guess what happened? It was lovely. It was lovely. They came in there. I'm talking about gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit is the expression of love. So they came there and all sat down. And the, you know, some of them came. They, they, she just told them what happened to her. So they came. They didn't know what to expect. You no, know, when they came, they just followed the leader. You know, sat down there and they were looking at me. And uh, they were all, I, I guess, probably what, what they were thinking was, okay, our leader told us to come here today. So maybe... Let's see what's going to happen. So while they were sitting there, guess what happened to them? All 30 of them were healed and they were weeping and they experienced the same thing that their teacher experienced the day before. When Jesus comes to a place, love is expressed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So guess what happened? I love this. <laughs> I love this. They came, sat down there, and with miracles happening, just the way I treated them, boy, it was an eye opener for the church. They began to say, but we wanted to, we just wanted to cast them out. Don't cast them out, cast the devil out, not the people out. People are God's prized possession. They are precious to him. They are his inheritance and that's why we have come to redeem and to bring back the inheritance back to daddy that's the whole idea and that's what i believe and that's what works miracles happen because we love people it's not because we want to show we have power and all of those things the bible says i'll show you more excellent way it is the way of love so the fruit of the spirit is the expression of love that is seen in joy and it is seen in peace it is seen in long-suffering gentleness goodness the the, the that that innate desire of god to look out for your well-being goodness of God surely goodness and mercy follows you because God cares and God loves hallelujah I hope this is helping you <laughs> hallelujah it is so wonderful when I when I share some of this testimonies this is what makes us go to the world just loving people what an what an what a joy to go to the world and just loving people and just believe the best about those precious people and then tell them what god sees in them isn't that wonderful is <laughs> i just think the devil is in trouble when we come to nations if we can get to them first and let them see the expression of love it's over for the devil before the religious people get there, let us get there. Love will fill the people up and they will be healed. Demons will come out of the people. Do you know when we come to places sometimes, we don't even cast out devils. When we show up with love, demons scream and leave the people. I say to the people, I don't even want to see manifest manifestation of demons around me. Why? Jesus is always the star of my show. He is always the center of my joy. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what I believe. Hallelujah. Amen. So gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. No one would put a law. No country can stop you. When you come and express that to the Muslims, to the Hindus, to the, to the Buddhists, to the Shintoists, all around the world. Why is it that the Muslims would invite me to their mosque? Why would the Hindus and the Buddhists invite me to, to their temples? Because they know against what I do, there is no law. Nobody has a problem with what we do. They will have a problem with religion, not love. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is love. Against such, there is no law. 
against love. Even if you go amongst ISIS and just loving them, it confuses them because they expect you to fight back. I mean, people want to hate you. You don't respond. You just love on them. It confuses them. It confuses the enemy. Hallelujah. That is who we are. They might call you naive. Oh, I, they, I hear people say all kinds of things. I said, I'm from a different breed. I'm a different species. I'm of the gut class, of the gut kind. That's who I am. Hallelujah. I am of the gut kind. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you wonderful people. Okay, now let me, let me move on. And let's, let's talk about the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Is that all right, people? Let's talk about the, the gift of the Spirit. Now, what is the difference between the fruit and the gifts? First of all, you know what the, the fruit is. It's love expressed in all those things. But the gift, it tells you in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, now concerning spiritual. Now, in the original text, the word gift was not there. A gift is like this. It's something given to you without you necessarily knowing it's there a gift but the gift of the Holy Spirit is not to benefit you the gift is to benefit all you see the gift of the Holy Spirit in you is not for you is for others the gift of the Holy Spirit is inside of you for others the fruit of the Holy Spirit is given is in you, produced for you, to benefit you in doing things with people. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The gift of the Spirit in you, it says concerning spiritual. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto this dumb idols. In other words, you were carried away to idols that do not speak. You were caught up in all kinds of rubbish. You were caught up in idols. Hear what the Bible says now. It gets better. Watch this now. It says, Even as you were led by them, it says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. You cannot say Jesus is Lord. You can say God is Lord. One of the tests to see what's in the spirit of people, I say to them, call the name Jesus. Say, Jesus, you are my Lord. The moment you release those words, you are entrapped by the words of your mouth. The demons will have to clear out. If, you're, if you've been set free, you can tell they will say Jesus is Lord. You cannot say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Ghost is speaking that in the, on the inside of you. Now, when people have a demon possessed, sometimes when we're casting them out and we used to say Jesus is Lord, they said uh, God is Lord. God is not Jesus. God is not Jesus. God could mean dog in a different country, in a different culture. God means an object of worship. His name is not God. <laughs> There's people say, but God, God, they call him Elohim, they call him El Shaddai, those are expressions of who he is, hallelujah, Jehovah, hallelujah, God Almighty, God Almighty, the Almighty God, not the other gods, the Almighty God, all other gods have no standing in his presence, but he has put his name in Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. So, if you say Jesus is Lord, it must be by the Spirit of God. Not I mean, Religious people don't understand that. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move on. Let, let's move on. Verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts. Diversity. In other words, there are different gifts. Well, hear this but the same spirit and there are differences in administration but the same Lord and there are diversities of operations but it is the same God which work at all of these things in all 
of us. Hallelujah. I love the word of God. It's the same God. So the emphasis is not the gifts. The emphasis is the God. <laughs> it's the God that gets it done. The same spirit. That's the key. That is the key. The same spirit. It, a lot of people are emphasizing the, the, the gifts, the gifts. No, it's the same spirit that is the emphasis repeated over and over. The same Lord. Three things that are mentioned there. It tells you there are differences in administration. It talks about diversity of operation, administration, operation, and then manifestation. Manifestation. It talks about administration. Administration, the structure to get it done. It talks about operation, actually getting it done. And it talks about manifestation, the result of getting it done. I hope you get what I'm talking about today. You understand what that means, right? Administration. How in a meeting we administer to people. How the arrangement for this what is on the inside of us to minister to all that are there? And then, while we are flowing there, there are different, it says, diversity of operation. So it's like being in a theater room. You have to have the administrators admi make sure they arrange things. The purpose of, an, of administration is to create order. The Holy Spirit creates the order by the Spirit and then the Holy Spirit, it tells you the same God now comes in to do what? To operate on the patient, on the people and then you see the manifestation of the operation. I hope this is helping you. So it's telling you about the same thing. It says the Spirit, the Lord, and the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All three. So the Spirit sets things in place, and Jesus in you, Christ in you, now does the operation. Guess what happens? And then the Father <laughs> takes care of the business of making sure all that He has promised in the Son is manifested through you. Hallelujah. Now let's move on. I hope you're understanding what I'm talking about. It's about the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. That means to profit everybody. The gift is not to profit you. The gift is to profit everyone around you. So when you talk about the fruit, it is what is grown so that you can enjoy joy, goodness, all those things. You enjoy it. But when it comes to the, the operation of the gift, it is for others to enjoy too by the same spirit. Hallelujah. You carry the giver of the gift. So when the Holy Ghost begins to operate, He is in you operating from that. So don't, don't wait for gift to come to you. Hallelujah. The giver is in you. Let Him express Himself fully through you. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody. Hallelujah. Now let's move on. I hope this is helping somebody today. Is helping somebody today. Hallelujah. Tell me, let me know if it's, it's helping. Give me a thumbs up. You see, people, uh, Jason says, please, please heal me of what I mentioned above. I can't see because if I'm talking to the camera, I cannot see. He says, please heal me, Apostle. I'm trying to find out what it is. Jason, what do you need healing for? Just let me know what you're healing you need, Jason. Put it down again. Write it down again. Let me know what you need. Healing is yours. It's the children's bread. Hallelujah. Hear what the Bible says. To one is given by the Spirit the word of knowledge. We don't have to go into the details of all of this. The word of knowledge. To another, the word of, it says to one, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing, plural. By the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles by the same Spirit. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all this work it that one at that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. In all the words, the Holy Ghost will divide it to people as he wants to. What is the will of the Spirit? 
The will of the Spirit is to meet the need. So that means, as He wills, is to, is to say, as the needs arise, He wills. Hallelujah. So if he, you need healing, you don't need prophecy. You need healing. If you need a, a prophecy, you don't need healing. The right tool for the job is the tool that gets the job done. I hope you understand that now. Hallelujah. So if you come and prophesy when somebody needs healing, wrong too. Hallelujah. So it is the Holy Ghost at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. I hope this is helping everybody today. Hallelujah. 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 So I hope this is helping everybody. Now, I want, I want, um, I want Jason. Jason, you say you want to be healed, but you don't tell me what you want to be healed of. Uh, if I can read it, I need healing for a, a medication addiction and medication dependency for a psychological condition, which I really need healing for also. Let's take care of the thing. <laughs> Jason, I want you to look right at the, maybe your tablet or your phone. Look right into my eyes. Jesus will be speaking to you right now as I'm speaking to you. Jason, you are free. I want you to know that you are free. That chemical dependency, I look in the back of your brain. I see where you become addicted to it. It's right in the back of your, your, your cortex, right in the back of your brain. Right in the back there. That's where that addiction has developed. As I'm speaking to you now, Jason, that addiction is gone. Any touch, you touch that medication, it will give you an adverse reaction because it will become repulsive to you from this moment. As I'm speaking to you, Jason, you're free. You are free. There is nothing wrong with you. Go back to your doctor. Let them examine you. They will find that your mind is back to normal. That psychological trauma that was caused when you were younger, it is broken right now. Forgive those people that hurt you. It is over now. You can start afresh again. All right? Jason, you're free. You're free. Go to show yourself to your doctors. They will take you off that medication. Let them examine you. They will find there's nothing wrong. In fact, if they do a scan of your brain, they'll find that that thing is completely cleared out. You are free, Jason. Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at uh, Yvonne. Yvonne, your mother di diabetes. I command the sugar level to come back to normal now. The sugar level comes back to normal in the name of Jesus. Right now as I'm speaking to you, every trace of that, I can see, I'm looking at your mother right now, I can see because of the sugar, her circulation problem in her feet, I can see that right now, she has a circulation problems, her feet get very cold and her blood is not circulating in her feet and I can see her knees and pain and the pain is gone, even the shoulder pain, almost like bursitis, that is completely healed now. If she moves her shoulders, that's that grinding, I'd see almost like a calcium deposit right on, on her shoulders, it is cleared up now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I you see you didn't I didn't even see, I didn't even know that you, you mentioned her legs, but I can see that now after I spoke. Hallelujah. And Jason, I said you're completely healed. Every trace of your body is made whole again. Hallelujah. So when we're talking about the gifts of the spirit, it is three three things you need to know. Operations, administration, manifestation. Those are the three things. And one thing you need to know is the giver of the gift lives in you. Do you know when they talk about the gift of the Spirit? Do you know I just flow in all nine gifts? I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like that. I, it, I flow in all nine gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit. I just, I don't know what they call it gifts. I just know it's the Holy Ghost living in the inside of me. I love that. <laughs> he is living on the inside of me, loving the people and bringing life to them. And somebody said to me, your prophecies are very accurate. You know things. I, are you a prophet? I smiled. I said, Jesus lives in this body. He is a prophet. He is whatever you need. <laughs> 
He is the great apostle. He is the great pastor. Let Jesus in you be, be let loose to become Jesus to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever is needed in the church, let that Jesus in you bring and supply to that body. Hallelujah. That's what I think. That's what I see. And that's what I do. I love what, when the Lord is moving in a mighty way. I hope this is helping somebody today. Amen. I know this is helping somebody. It's helping give you the right thing to do. Hallelujah. And Jason, you will sleep like a baby tonight. You don't need medication to go to sleep. Your sleep shall be sweet today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to take the last question and I'll be done. I hope this has helped you a little bit. Now, this is a question that came to me. It says, what do you do if there are only there are only very rigid rigid religious churches within a far distance from where you live? In other words, what do you do if you have no living church around you? Go and win souls and start teaching people some things. Oh, you can you can you, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. It's always a good thing to be part of a local church. I, I, I always say that. But if you go to a church and they don't believe what the Bible says, I'd rather you just meet a bunch of folks, take them out to breakfast, and then teach them about the love of God. Teach them what you know. You don't have to go back there and fight with people and argue with people. We're not made to win arguments. We're made to love people and win hearts. That's what we're called to do. I hope this is helping you. So, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know this is helping everybody that is watching. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me take question, one question from those of you that are watching, and then we can wrap it up. So, my answer to the last question is, either you bring people together, two or three are gathered in his name, he is in their midst. You don't have to have 10,000 people to start with. Just start with two or three, and pour your heart of love to them. Let them see the Jesus that lives in you, alive and manifesting. Hallelujah. Amen. Look for a place that they believe what you believe. Like precious faith is very vital so that your faith can grow. Okay, now, hallelujah. Hello, Sharon. How are you? I missed you. <laughs> oh, this is my family in Massachusetts and uh, via Connecticut. I love you guys. I can't wait to see you guys Sunday, the Christmas Eve. It's going to be wonderful at the embassy where God is moving and lives are being transformed. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I'm so excited about what God is doing here today. So, if I take one more question from you that are watching, uh, that'll be lovely, that'll be lovely. I just don't want to miss any question that's asked of me today. I hope this is helping all of you. I hope this is helping you. So, one last question, and I know we've gone beyond time, but it is worth it. Because we started 15 minutes into our time clock. I want to make sure you have a full hour of Q&A. And, um, heavenly... <laughs> I love you. Hallelujah. I love all of you that are watching today. It is a wonderful day. Jesus is born fresh in you every day. Isn't that wonderful? I want to say, I want to say a Merry Christmas every day to all of you that are watching. We celebrate Jesus alive, born on the inside of us. When, whenever somebody is born again, the glory of God shines in a new neighborhood in them. Hallelujah. That's what I believe. <laughs> I love all of you. You guys are wonderful. You're my family. And did you see what I put up? The, the world-renowned Harlem Gospel Choir. They are traveling all through Europe. And they decided to sing me a happy birthday. <laughs> I love those guys. I hope you guys are coming. The, the Harlem Gospel Choir, you're coming to Power School. Hallelujah. I love them to bits. They are just amazing. And they sang a happy birthday to me. What a great joy and a great honor. Thinking of me, I know Naisha and all the team, you know, a wonderful team in the, in, in the Harlem Gospel Choir. I love all of you. Go and bring joy to the world. Hallelujah. They're traveling all this month in Europe. They've been in Italy. They've been to Brussels, different parts of Italy. I used to live in Italy, folks. So I know some of the places you guys are talking about. I love those places. Isn't that beautiful? We, when you get a good gelato, it is beautiful. You eat that thing and you just forget your name. Hallelujah. I'm just having fun. I love you, Pastor Dennis. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, I love Europe. I love, I love, when I used to live in it, I was a little kid then, and uh, I really learned a lot of things. I, lo I love Europe. And, uh, and then, and I see they are really, they're really doing a great job there. Either way, in Budapest, in Hungary, with our international uh, director, Princess Reka, they had a great time. I could see them. Oh boy, I, I wish I could just tag along with you guys. Very soon, guys, very soon. I love all of you. Hallelujah. I said, what do you do when you have night visions that you don't understand? Now, there's a good question. Love you, Maria. What do you do when you have a night vision that you don't understand? This is what I say to people. When you have a vision you don't understand, put it on a shelf until the Holy Ghost gives you revelation. Don't sweat over it. But if it's something you understand immediately, two things given to you. Either what's going to happen so that you prepare yourself and you will not have a crisis. Or things that w is about to happen that you can change. I, I say, whatever, I say to my family, I say, whatever you don't like, change it. You don't like it? God believes that you can change it. And that was why uh, Abraham said, if there's, what will happen if there's, there are 10 righteous men? What are you going to do? Are you going to destroy the world? God, I mean, he was bargaining with God. In other words, do you know by you understanding your place, God reveals those things to you so that you, as the Lord of this earth, can take charge of it. So that something that is supposed to happen does not happen without you giving it permission. Most times when people have a vision, they begin to panic. You don't panic. God reveals those things to you in a dream or vision for you to either correct or for you to prepare yourself for what's going to happen. If it's something you're not supposed to correct, you let it go. If it's a warning, you warn the people. But the thing is, you're not merciless. You're not, uh, you're not um, basically helpless, I would say. The idea of God showing you things is so that you can do something about it. Because you are His body in your world. I hope this is helping you guys. Amen, amen, amen. I love you. Any other questions? I know you guys, we've been having a great time this, this day, this Friday. And please, 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 I want to encourage you. We still are trying to get things off the ground. I still need your help. Some of you that can sow a thousand dollars towards the television network. Remember, we're coming, we're going to be doing it a little differently. We just don't want, you know, we don't want to speak Christianese all the time. We want to be teaching you, bringing in amazing teachers that can talk about fashion, they can talk about different things. We want to be able to do different programming so that you can get a full picture of kingdom living. That's what the Win TV is all about, winning with Christ. Hallelujah. Winning with a king. Hallelujah. I like those tags. Learning to win in life. So I want to encourage you, if you can sow a seed of a thousand, or five thousand, ten thousand dollars, whatever God speaks to you, five hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, fifty, don't, it doesn't matter what it is. If you can just go to Christlove.org, click donate, and you can sow a seed towards this aim. This, what we're bringing to you, we want to bring it out to you at the highest quality. You know, on Facebook, it is our, it's 720p. We actually, everything I'm teaching you right now is recorded in 4K at least. That's our, our standard. We're recording it at the highest possible level. And what you are getting is, is not as good a quality as what we're actually producing here at the studio. And I hope you like our little set here today for Q&A. Uh, from now on, I think I'm going to use this as the set for Q&A. I like, I like this. You can say I like my, I like, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a reader. Leaders are readers, so I, I like to, to, to learn a lot of things. But most importantly, I like to listen to the Holy Spirit talk to me and teach me some wonderful things. Hallelujah. Do you know something? The Father loves you and He has given His best so that you can become the best the world has ever seen. I want to say I love you guys. You are my joy. You are my glory. You know what? When I get to the King, I will come and I present all of you to Him as spotless bride without blemish, without blemish, without wrinkles, without any such thing. I can say, Lord, these are the people you gave me, and they make a beautiful bride to the Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, and I can't wait to see you guys. 
and we see we have Ryan, hallelujah, love you, love you, love you, and we have Teresa from Denmark, love you, Susie, she is, Susie, you, I need to photocopy you, you are just too amazing, I need to make photocopies of Susie, she is our administrator, she does everything and does it with a degree of uncommon excellence. Thank you, Susie. Love you, sweetie. I love you. And on Lamy Day, I love you. I can't wait to see you guys very soon. Maria and all of you, I want to say I love all of you. And I'm going to wrap it up here. I'll see you guys again. Maybe I can do a little surprise. You never know. Maybe tomorrow I can come up with something new, something fresh. I'll give you one hour's heads, heads up time before I come on. Okay? I love you. And I look forward to seeing you again. God bless you.